The Lord be with you. you. Welcome to worship on this wonderful day, a special day. Uh, Reformation Sunday, of course, we recall and celebrate God's grace among us. We remember, uh, of course, when Martin Luther hammered those 95 theses on there to promote discussion within the church, and of course, much more happened. And in the meantime, we're still picking up the pieces and coming together, but we are also celebrating that God's word brings us the promises that God's grace is with us, God's grace holds us and loves us freely, and uh, we are God's children because God has declared it so and given it as a gift. We celebrate that today. We celebrate it, of course, with uh, an affirmation of baptism with our young people. We have four people here today who are affirming their baptism after uh, two and a half years of study together, and we welcome them and are grateful for their journey of faith and their sharing with us where they are in that journey, even as we also journey day by day and grow day by day in God's grace. So we're grateful for that and uh, thank those young people for their sharing today. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And on All Saints Sunday, we like to remember those in our midst who have died. And we do that with the uh, naming a time of silence and a ringing of a bell. And we welcome everyone who has a loved one in their hearts that they remember on that particular day to bring a picture by this coming Friday noon, a picture no larger than eight by 10, whatever that size of picture is right in there. And we will adorn our altar area with the saints who have gone before us and now are that cloud of witnesses around that cheer us on. So uh, next Sunday, All Saints Sunday. By the way, next Sunday is also Turn Your Clock Back Sunday. You can come to church early if you'd like. We welcome you at any hour. But uh, next Sunday, we go back to the standard time fall back. Next Sunday as well, we will be blessing prayer shawls. There's a ministry of making shawls, and when there's a special need within the community, the the congregation, that we bring these shawls and remind people they are wrapped in the prayers of God's people. They are wrapped by God's grace. Next Sunday as well, We have a service project in between services. um, We're going to wrap 2,500 forks with napkins for the community food kitchen. So please come early and join us in that effort. We had the blessing, and we're going to have a blessing of uh, trick-or-treaters and and, uh, during our children's time. We did that during, there was a trick-or-treat time in between services. There's still more treats. You're welcome to treats after worship, I've been told. We come today celebrating the grace of God, celebrating that God is with us in wherever we are in our journeys of faith and continuing to hold us, to teach us, to move us and comfort us and send us out into the world. So as we celebrate today, we we invite you to stand and to join in the singing of our opening hymn, 504. And as we're getting ready for that, I just want to make one more note. Uh, Pastor Doug will be with us next Sunday again. You've noted he's been gone. He and his siblings and parents have been able to spend time together after all they've been through and are going through 
and we're grateful for that time he's been able to have a way with them of renewal and uh, holding each other, and we're welcoming back this week. Let's sing together. the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
gracious Lord, on this Reformation Day, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews your church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your word and protect and comfort us in times of trial. Defend us against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we invite all the kids to come on up. This is a special day, and we have a special um, blessing for all trick-or-treaters today. Um, to those of you joining us online, greetings, and to those of you here, greetings as well. Come on up. I'm going to put my mask back on, but I want you to see my smile. We're going to sit right over here, how about, or, yeah, on the step, however you want to sit. Yay! Your costumes are so creative. Wow. All right. On, yeah, do you guys want to be over here? On the count of three, will you help us know what your costume is? So just call out the name of it. One, two, three. Oh, nice. You guys put some, this is awesome. Who, who's excited for trick-or-treating? Yep such a fun time. Well, we're going to talk for just a couple minutes, then I have a special blessing for you, and then a treat for you today. So, what do we call the day, or the night before Christmas Day? Christmas yeah, Christmas Eve. Okay, what do we call the night before New Year's Eve? Oh, I knew I would do that. <laughs> okay, wait, do you all have the answer the night before New Year's Day is? New Year's. New Year's Eve, right? Okay, what do we call the night before All Saints Day? All Saints Day's Eve? Yeah, that makes total sense. Guess what? We call it Halloween. How does that go together? So All Saints Day is tomorrow. And it's the day that we remember all of our loved ones and the people who have died and gone to heaven ahead of us. And we remember God's promises that anyone, everyone who believes in Jesus will be saved and have eternal life with God. That Jesus has a place for us because Jesus loves us just like all the people that have gone before us. All Saints is a really special day, and we'll celebrate that in worship next Sunday. All Saints Day used to be known as All Hallows Day, and Halloween used to be known as All Hallows Eve, and then it got shortened to Halloween. Hundreds of years ago, church people would dress up on, Hallow on All Hallows Eve, Eve in costumes and make fun of things that are scary because we don't need to be afraid. We believe in God who is all-powerful, almighty. God is stronger and more powerful than fear, than death, and that evil. So we can laugh at scary costumes because they don't have the ultimate power. God does. And God loves it when we are filled with joy and happiness and, um, and laughter. So when you are out and about tonight and today, say a little prayer of thanks. Thank you, God, for the fun. And thank you, God, for being almighty. Well, you might have noticed there's like a ton going on today. There's beautiful red banners and... We're celebrating Reformation Sunday, which is the birthday of the Lutheran Church, so happy birthday, us Lutherans. And today is the affirmation of baptism. Our ninth graders are going to read their statements of faith to us, and I'm so excited to hear those. 
504 years ago, Martin Luther, who our church is named after, he shared his statement of faith with people too. He had read in the Bible in Ephesians 2, 8, that we are saved by God's grace through our faith in Jesus. There's nothing we can do to make that happen. It's a free gift from God. Luther thought that was so important. He was like, oh my goodness, people need to read the Bible. They need to read this for themselves. But there was a problem. The Bible was written in Hebrew and Greek. Anybody read Hebrew or Greek? No, they couldn't back then either. Okay, and people who were poor couldn't go to school, and girls weren't even allowed in school. So Luther translated the Bible into the language of the people, and he started the very first public school. How many of you guys go to school? Yes. Okay, Luther would be so happy about that. How many of you guys are readers or learning to read? Awesome. Awesome. Learning can be so fun, and it can be challenging sometimes. Just know that we are so proud of all your learning and we encourage you to keep learning. And if you don't have a Bible at home to read, you let me know, because that's so important. And because you are such smart people, we have Smarties today. And I'll give them to you after the blessing. I invite all of you to stand, and you guys to stand. And as you are comfortable, stretch out your arm or your hands in blessing these kids and some of you can reach your arm toward the cameras and we'll, I don't know which camera is working but um, we'll catch all the we'll catch all the kids in blessing all right holy God giver of life we know you are ruler over all things that make us fearful you triumph over the evils in our world and you raise your people to life again after death as the one who created us, we know it makes you glad to hear us laugh and to watch us play. So we ask you to bless all here today, online and in person. Bless all who will go out trick-or-treating. Let their laughter and the wholesome fun that they enjoy be assigned to all who do not know you, that your love reigns over all things in heaven and on earth. In the name of God the Creator, Jesus, God's Son, and the Holy Spirit who sustains life. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. And in the spirit of sharing what we have, you can take three, one for you and two to share, okay? Good morning. The first lesson is from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Please read responsibly Psalm 46. 
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks, breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second lesson is Romans 3, 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed, and it is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Which is a great verse to lead into the faith papers. <laughs> um, my name is Terry, and I have been teaching confirmation for a long time here at Gloria Day. And I just wanted to say a few words before we turn the service over to Justin and the conferments. Every class has a different personality, and this particular class had to put up with a lot because we call it kind of Zoom 2. This is our second uh, pandemic class. And, but this particular class, I think, has the most inquisitive of all the, of the different classes, asking questions and different things, and which I really welcome. I think that's really been great. We've, had, we've, we've kind of limped along, but in some ways, the Zoom, uh, the Zoom meetings, we actually kind of got into pe people's heads, or you could talk a little bit more instead of other activities going on. T try to make the best, your, have your your uh, glass half full instead of half empty. But they persevered and they, they kept showing up and we, we, I think we only had uh, one session where it was just me and Justin <laughs> and, no, and no kids. <laughs> but um, I'm very proud of them. They've done, they've done well and we've talked a lot about faith, faith as, uh, faith as a choice and faith as uh, faith over fear, and but most of them, most important is faith is a journey, not a destination. So thank you very much, um, and thank you for sharing your children and um, bringing them here and supporting them through this program.
Holy Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 36. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Hi, I'm Sawyer Conklin, and this is my faith paper. First off, I would like to speak about death, a very interesting but deep topic. Death kind of scares me. It's a mystery that has no answer. What I have come to understand is that energy cannot be destroyed, but it can be transferred somewhere. Your brain has energy that powers it. Science knows little to nothing about this energy, proving that the afterlife is in fact real. I have no clue what it looks like, and I am still learning. Second, sins. When I think of the word sin, I think of it like a line from The Outsiders. Stay golden, pony boy. Stay golden. I interpret that, that as a why we don't want to sin, to live our best life so we can go on and accomplish things that sins can drag us away from. Jesus was a very smart and simple man. He told us, what humans need to do to live our best lives, and all we have to do is follow his teachings. So to sum this up, avoiding sin is a way of keeping us safe and healthy. If you try to sin less, you will end up doing better. My last topic I want to speak of is joy. We all have people, places, and things that bring us joy. A few things that bring me joy are mountain biking and unexpected moments that end up being really fun, and making people feel happy and comfortable. Joy is my favorite part of religion. Us Lutherans enjoy life a lot and make the best of all situations. We also enjoy giving joy to others. Christmas is an example of this. We sing songs, celebrate, give, and receive. It's cozy and comforting. It makes us think about not just us, but, our, but others. A verse I found from the Bible about joy was Nehemiah 8.10, 8, which says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. This quote called out to me because it means joy motivates you to push through sadness and depression. In conclusion, as far as my faith goes at the moment, I'm still questioning what the afterlife is like. Avoiding sins make our conscience happy while also making it so we can love our neighbors. And joy is a very important emotion. I love this church and the community that comes with it. Everyone is so accepting and helpful. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Hello, my name is John Paul Fox Seidel. I am 14 years old, and I attend Avanti and Capital High School. I've been in, you guys have probably seen me in several church musicals here, and I was in children's choir for a lot of years. Um, and I, I love to talk about pretty much anything, um, but, but right now I'm gonna talk about um, my faith. Um, I believe in people. I believe in laughter, and I believe in joy. I believe that the ability to change the world for the better resides in every single human on this planet. For me, God is the ability to ask myself questions that reflect on and challenge my moral beliefs. 
so that I can understand what my purpose is. Because why am I here if not to make the world a better place? If our scripture and Lutheran beliefs say that everyone is equal and everyone is loved equally, why then is there so much hatred among those who are different from each other? These are the kinds of questions that I ask myself that challenge me. When Osama bin Laden was killed, millions of people danced in the streets because uh, the U.S. had killed someone. Um, and while, while many people say it was justified because he had orchestrated the death of thousands um, at, on 9-11, um, and we were at war with him, is it also true then that the thousands of innocent Afghans who were killed in the war um, was also justified? Uh, and it, it, you know, it's how far are we willing to go to, to justify hurt, hurting people and, and killing people? Um, my Bible verse is Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. I chose this Bible verse because it is about mourning the people you have killed specifically in war, and mourning them like you would your own child. Scripture shows us that killing anyone is like the loss of our, one of our loved ones. And since we're all a big family in this world, um, killing is, is never right and it should never be celebrated um, like it has been before. Um, I, I don't say this to provoke an argument or a response. Um, I say this more to, to explain how my faith causes me to wrestle with these difficult questions and uh, it challenges the cultural norms um, of our country, our church, and even um, individual relationships we have with people. Uh, I don't really pray, um, or at least not in the usual way. For me, praying isn't uh, getting down on your hands and knees or clasping your hands. It's a conversation uh, with God. And God is in my brain, and I get inspiration in these calm moments, and I feel a deeper connection to kind of everything and the universe. And uh, my, my stress kind of goes away, and I feel, uh, you know, open, and, and I, can, I can think about those challenging things um, and I can think, what have I done today that made the world a better place? Um, the reason I come to Gloria Day is, and, and want to be confirmed, is because I know that you, the congregation, will support me on my faith journey. And uh, while I continue to explore my faith and seek to have a better understanding of our world and our universe, I really, I really hope to continue asking me myself these difficult questions, and I just want to say thank you for your support. Yeah. Hello, my name is Addie Hecht and I believe that everyone has a different faith journey and calling in life. Everyone has a different interpretation of faith and lives it out in his or her own way, which is totally fine. For me, my faith is more than what I believe in. It is a life that I choose to live and my trust in God. I choose to follow Jesus Christ and carry out his mission to the world. Every day, my faith and trust in God impacts how I act and the choices that I make. I always turn to God and ask for forgiveness when I do something wrong. I pray that I can be better and make a better choice next time, and I decide to act more with love and kindness in the future. My faith is outlined with my belief in the Trinity, 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The mystery of the Trinity is that God is three divine persons united into one holy body and all carry out the same mission to help each and every one of us be better disciples and followers of God. The first person of the Trinity is God the Father. I believe in a loving God who is all powerful and slow to anger, rich in kindness. There are no words to describe God because he is more powerful than everything we know of. It is hard to conceptualize the complexity of the world and universe, why there is evil in the world, and why humans are created the way they are. But my faith in God brings about the idea that we cannot know everything, but faith can bring us closer to discovering the truth. Through reason, we are led to believe in the existence of God. We can find God in all things, love, nature, and goodness, because he created all of that. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of who God is, and he reveals the truth about him. He is the second person of the Trinity. Jesus is the word of God made flesh and was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was sent down to earth to save us from sin so that we can be forgiven, and he allows us to enter into a new life with him after death. His whole life and coming into the world was a sign of his love for humanity, especially his death on the cross. He showed that humans are the greatest creation of God and deserve to be in a loving and joyful relationship with him. Through his resurrection, he showed that everything he preached was true and that he truly is the Son of God. The Son of God works in accordance with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit and the last person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit helps us to see the mission of Jesus in our lives and empowers everyone to live good and holy ones. The Holy Spirit fills us with courage to spread God's word to all and strength to follow Jesus' example. If we open our hearts and minds to God, the Holy Spirit will increase God's work in the world. And along with that, if we walk with the Holy Spirit, we can come to have love, patience, kindness, generosity, self-control, peace, gentleness, and faithfulness. All persons of the Trinity work together to spread the message of God to all people. All those who choose to follow God and be united with him make up the church. I believe that the church is like a bridge between heaven and humanity. If we the people follow in Christ's footsteps and choose to live a life similar to Jesus's, then we can enter into heaven to live with God forever. I believe that the church, the assembly of Christians, was established by Jesus along with the sacraments. Baptism and Holy Communion were instituted by Jesus to make his love present and true in the world. When we are baptized and have received Holy Communion, we are further increasing our relationship with God to spread his love to the world. These are my beliefs in God and were revealed through all that I have learned here at church as well as through all the kind and loving people here who have demonstrated God's love to me and guided me on my faith journey. I am still growing in my faith and have so much more to learn. I hope that as Lutherans, we can continue to bring God's love to all, which can possibly make a difference in the lives of those who have not quite found God in their lives. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sam. Um, to start off, I think it's best that I state my faith statement, which is Psalm 23. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. No, it's short but sweet. I think it best describes life. So, with my experience in life, I know that we are all the lambs of God, and that we will, he, he's, he's shepherding us. He herds us, and he takes us where it's best. We might not know what's best, but in the end, it all works out. He heals us when we're sick, picks us up when we're in poverty, uh, makes us feel better when we're struggling with depression. Anything that we need, God will be there for us. Over the past couple of years, especially the last one, I've had a lot of time to think to myself, stuck in quarantine, you know. I really just ha thought I'd be in a room for hours on end during a day, school, really wasn't paying attention, but um, 
I, I would think to myself the entire time, and I'd think about life, and I, I'd have to say that one thing that really made this conclusion was a movie that I once watched. I've thought about this quote many times, which is, life, it's like a painting, and that in the fact that everything's blurry to us, we're viewing it from behind, but God, he views it from the front, and to him, it's the most beautiful thing ever created. And so, while we may not get to see what that is until we get to join God one day, we have to know that he has the best interest for us and that everything will end up okay. I believe that even though times get rough, that God just, he, he's planting blessings. All we have to do is wait for them to sprout. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I will walk by faith and not by sight. Trust in where God takes me, for he loves me unconditionally. This is what I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Compromise. I want to confess something to you. I could never have done that when I was your age. <laughs> and uh, a second thing is this is a wonderful place for you to be. This is a gift along life's way, a, li a gift of life. But it is a growing gift. It's not static. You will change in your faith, and that's all God's doing as well, and that's good. And may God bless you and keep you as you continue to grow in faith. Let's rise and sing together. Hymn number 671.
as we come together in prayer, we add to our prayer list today the family of Claudia Wagner, who joined her husband six days after he died in death as well, and the family of Shirley Reinertsen, who died this weekend. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. We are grateful for the strong faith heritage we enjoy, which flows from the Reformation of over 500 years ago. We give thanks for our freedom and grace and the light of God to grow, change, confess our flaws and failings, and ground our church anew in the word and truth of God in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains and plains, rivers and streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for your creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy be great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal, that all might live the abundant life you intend. Give healing and strength to all who cry out to you, especially those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us. O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. We rejoice and celebrate our confirmands as they share their statements of faith. Help each young person to continue to grow under the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Challenge us to faithfully support each confirmand with our prayers and encouragement. Hear us, O oh God. As we anticipate All Saints Sunday next week, we give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who now dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. You may be seated.
So if the families of the conformans want to come up and surround their ninth grader, that'd be awesome. All right. Thank you so much for coming. So I present the ninth grade confirmation class of 2021 who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. We have Sawyer, John Paul, and Addie, and Sam. So let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lost. Do you intend, confirmants, to continue in the covenant God made with you at your holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ in word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Um, if you do, you can say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. 
Great. Uh, people of God, in our congregation here today and online, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. So now we're going to go, um, we're going to do a, a blessing on each one of these ninth graders. Yep. Oh, and congregation, you, you may be seated. <laughs> All right. Stir up in Sawyer, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Terry has a certificate. Stir up in John Paul, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Addie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Sam the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And also with you. Congregation, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace if you are able with each other in the blue Bible. Thank you. Now can you hear me? We respond with our very being as we give ourselves in response to God's promises outpoured for us freely. So let's worship together in this offering time. We'll listen to our choir.
God of all grace, it is with our delight and our devotion that we give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept our joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Prepare us now for this amazing fellowship around your table. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our privilege. It is our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this to remember me. And then again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. It's out of order, but it's still appropriate to sing the praises with all those hosts of heaven who surround us now. Let's sing. The holy, holy, holy. Gracious God, we give you praise, and we pray that you continue to teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ is broken for you.
and the blood of Christ is shed for you. All are welcome at this table. God's gifts are freely given. If you choose not to come to receive the elements, you may come to receive a blessing. Just indicate by keeping your hands together. You may be seated. The ushers will show you forward.
Please rise as you're able. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. pray. God of grace, thank you for raising Jesus Christ from the tomb, our hope for life eternal. Holy Spirit, fill us with your strength to be the body of Christ on earth, God's church in South Puget Sound, and here in this congregation. Give us strength to do the work you would have us do, to be the people you would have us be, and most of all, Give us hope as we wait together to see Jesus again. Amen. Let's go with blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. O day full of grace, hymn number As God's dearly loved people, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.